Okay, here's the next correspondence game. And playing as white at last. So opened E4 as usual. Just developed through nice and steadily captured and just highlight this particular maneuver here. So always looking at the creative aspect of things and if the opponent is getting too creative looking at taking advantage of um, tempo wins that type of situation so they did push through here big and for a brief moment I thought well I don't know why they've given that pawn up in that sense is it developing them so it was the smallest of details I just thought well we're gonna sort of win a, a mini 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 minor minor tempi out of that so they developed their bishop so we can push forward now with our center pawn and then they move the bishop again there's nothing wrong with moving pieces twice right yeah if you're finding appropriate positions for them then that's all well and good but if you're playing somebody who isn't really giving you a feed then you're then not developing your other key pieces so you've lost a, a proper full tempi by actually doing that particular move is the idea that the bishop is actually coming to attack this pawn to dishevel the queen it's not really sure so to me that was like a, a big waste of a, a move I think the Valbar probably is backing us up on that one so a bit too creative overly creative probably worrying about something that isn't actually happening at all so yeah that's very strange and it's hopeful that I'm trying to get rid of any types of moves like that so we bring our bishop through we're wanting to go on castle get king safety keeping it all straightforward and simple so we castle and again the opponent is very late in ca castling I think this is the fourth game where castling seems to be not the order of the day so then they brought the bishop back again so losing lots more tempi I've seen higher rated players playing like this as well you know in this sort of way and it re they do lose tempi some of them can win you know using that because they're just waiting for the opponent to overextend you know um, and it's almost like they're sort of like playing dumb you know it's like basically doing what is it the bomb cloud or whatever they call these things you know where they do silly moves just so that the opponent feels that they're winning and then somehow they come out actually um, winning from these bad positions that they're creating for themselves so don't try not to fall for these things but bear in mind that yes I am probably now free temp it up based on what the opponent, the opponent has done with these initial moves but it's how I take advantage of that and taking advantage isn't like trying to swarm the opponent it's about getting my pieces working together and then attacking key spaces key key weaknesses key pieces and then attacking the king area and pressuring the king so that's my thought process keeping it nice and simple the opponent can dance around with one piece all they want we need to get our team working together not get drawn into a subliminal sort of trance of trickery so another small move okay so we're taking advantage of that another loss in tempo because they're not developing their pieces seems to be the general theme from these first four games that we've talked about so now we can basically look to trade off pieces now because they've not developed the pieces so we may as well look to see if we can just start whipping the pieces off the board so they do capture captures and um, we, we expected the queen to take but now he's dancing with the queen tacking the pawn here so we probably need to look to protect that so bringing the bishop up defending seems pretty straightforward this king could go on castle queen side but didn't take the opportunity so the king is still stuck in the center so we can nicely nice and steadily just move the queen out of the way now he's coming for an attack on the bishop again it's a bit of a non move because these pieces aren't developed and it's not really supported anywhere the queen is over here on by itself bishop stuck in the center not really doing anything and the rook is now 
you would see its own in the file by itself. So we can bring the bishop back quite nicely. And now the Fiancetta wins, so he's got like two on there. We've only got one on there at the minute, so we can easily bring the queen to support, but also allowing us to potentially attack and get the rook off the board. So we're looking at a, a, a good massive take fest because of the poor position of the opponent's pieces. So he looks to basically exchange off at this point here. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy because we're just going to be basically looking to take that off there, looking to challenge the rook to get that off there if we can. Uh, the king will be here once that's taken then we can put the rook here then we can sort of improve our position with our bishops and our other pawn positions so capture they capture so they've doubled the pawns now at this stage now we're looking to exchange off the rooks as we said so just going to capture just trading down because their position at the minute I'm feeling fairly comfortable again you might look at it and go well it looks like a pretty even situation on the board um, in my eyes I'm thinking there's some strength that we can create coming up on this side here because the opponent's late to the party with his pieces on the other side of the board so we start pushing the pawn up uh, gauge bar didn't like that but doesn't like their rook move either so we capture start developing the knight squeeze in the knight now so to give them something to think about if the bishop takes pawn takes highly developed pawn and he's moved his king out of the way so we can now start challenging the pawns this isn't our focal area we just wanted to disturb this area even though we've got more pieces on this side our focal point is actually focusing on this area up here so the knight comes down and we look to develop the bishop protecting the pawn because the knight's attacking and this is like the sweet spot now this is the area that we wanted to take advantage of so we push past and we're ready to take so if he's looking to exchange we're gladly going to take that off the board which we do and we capture bring the knight through now attacking the bishop also looking for a nice key square here as well <clears throat> but trading down just getting rid of the pieces because we want to focus on developing our pieces up here so all this distraction work over on this side is helping our case knight takes now we can bring the bishop back support the pawn support our bishop just get the king up just in case there's any trickery now we can start action in this now it's a funny sort of equation and the opponent didn't have to do the moves they made but they made the moves so we capture the pawn here and then we capture here so at this stage here this is where the magic can occur depending on what the opponent does obviously so the knight moves to the wrong side of the board I think the, the real art probably would have been bringing the knight here protecting around this area so he's looking for a 2 on 1 on this pawn don't really care if we can get this pawn out of the way then this pawn can just go ramping up and they do actually capture so then we push the pawn and it's looking to come past but we're looking to go and get promoted and then they resigned so that again is like late development of pieces yes it got this far in the game but for me this is a, a comfortable position for us right from the start when the opponent wasn't actually doing any castling didn't prepare their pieces out so this poor knight and his bishop and his his other rooks and stuff were very late to the party so all the drinks had been drunk all the cakes had been drunk so they were out now nibbling on the bare bones of the the scraps you know they were like eating the crusts off the pizzas you know that type of thing so just being those moments too late to the party in chess can create a little bit of havoc especially towards the end game